Hi, this is Lisa Amundsen from Twister Sisters, and I'm here to answer the burning question of the day, which is, how do I shape the twister tray? So this is the twister tray. It's the newest pattern from Twister Sisters, and it's got curved sides. Um, just a few basics. The front is made using the mini twister tool from Twister Sisters to make the pinwheel design, and then um, you layer it with um, fabric behind, quilt it, and in between is Bozel's Heat Moldable Double-Sided Fusible Plus. That's a mouthful for some really awesome stuff that makes it firm, but you can soften it up with the iron and be able to shape it. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, just a couple things before I switch the camera down to look at the work surface. Um, in terms of supplies, you're gonna wanna have a steam iron. Um, I don't have anything fancy, it's just, just a regular steam iron. Um, Mine certainly is, is pretty basic. If you don't have a good, good steam source, you can just use a spray bottle. That works. And then I like to use uh, Teflon on my work surface because you're using pretty high heat and steam, and so it's a good idea to protect your work surface. It's not a big deal, but it'll make your ironing board last longer. If you don't have one, though, you can use um, parchment paper. That works. And then finally, you're gonna to wanna to have something to help shape it. And so I just use a nine by nine Pyrex dish. So pretty basic stuff. Most people have something like this or similar uh, just to get a rounded edge and, and add some structure while you're trying to shape. So uh, let's get started. Now we're going to shape the twister tray. And just to recap where we are in the pattern, um, we've been following the twister tray pattern to make the twister tray. And you start the process by first uh, quilting the top using the mini twister tool by Twister Sisters. And that's the mini twister tool there. And once you're done completing the quilt top, then you layer up fabric that's on the back side and then Bozel Heat Moldable Double Sided Fusible Plus. And so here's the Here's the heat moldable. It's fusible, like I said, on both sides. And so you can use a uh, steam iron to fuse the layers together. This also comes in a bigger package, but this one is super nice. Uh, they created a die cut for us so that you don't have to cut it out and unfold the larger piece. So this is super easy to use and it's the exact size that you need. So here we have our completed twister tray, we've done the layering, we've quilted it, we've trimmed it, and we've uh, bound it around the edges. And it is still flat. And we're gonna start pressing it with a steam iron. So I have this uh, set on fairly high heat. Uh, it's a cotton setting. And I have it on the steam. And I'm just going to soften up all the way around to just generally soften it up. steam in there. Okay, and then I'm going to focus on one side at a time. So I'm going to fold the twister tray along the seam that runs along the center of these pinwheels on one side. And I'm just going to fold it up and I'm basically just training it to have a crease there. And then once I get it even across the length of that side. Then I'm gonna hold it in place to let it cool. I'm gonna do the same thing around all four sides. And then when I'm done, then we're gonna fine tune it um, by shaping it over a Pyrex dish. So it just takes a few minutes per side um, at most. This is already looking good, so I'm going to turn it and shape the next side and make my way around the tray. So it's not hard. The nice thing about this, um, don't burn your fingers, just give it a second after you steam it. The nice thing about the uh, Bozel Heat Moldable Fusible Plus is that it's very forgiving. So I'm going to fold it here along the seam line. What I'm trying to do is get um, each side up at the same angle, which is not hard to do. So I fold it first, and then I'm holding it at about a 60 degree, 40 degree angle, somewhere in there. 
and I want to get some consistency on all four sides. And what I was saying is, um, if I if it doesn't turn out exactly the way I want, it's not a problem because I can reheat it and shape it further. If um, if one side ends up being a little higher than the other sides, I can tweak it a little bit, and it's no problem. So I'm going to move on to the third side. Again, folding right on that seam. And I don't want to keep it up at a 90 degree angle because that is not as attractive. I thought it looked best when it's more at a 45 to 60 degree angle. So once I get a good fold in there, then I hold it at the angle that I want it. And as, as you fold the, each side, you'll notice that the, the side before it might lay down a little bit. We'll take care of that when we shape it on the tray or on the on the dish. This might take you just a little bit longer the first time you do it. I've done a bunch of these now. Um, but it really is not very time consuming. I'm just again folding along that seam and then I'm holding it. This is my fourth side and if you look at the tray you can see, uh, hopefully you can see from the camera angle, that that is up on all four sides now. I'll hold it up and see if you can see it a little bit better that way too. This is looking pretty good. So there you can see that all four sides are angled upward and now we're going to fine tune those corners a bit. So I'm going to take my Pyrex dish and hold it or place it upside down and put my tray over the top. And my goal is not to just shape this tight against the Pyrex dish. Rather, I'm just going to I'm going to have it lined up with the edges and I'm going to put one hand over the top of it, actually back a little ways, and I'm going to steam the corner. And then I'm going to cup it with the other hand and hold it while it cools. My goal is to achieve consistency from the two sides, so I'm holding it so that it's at the same angle on both sides. Nothing tricky here, though. I'm just shaping it a little bit more. This one looks a little flat. I'm going to shape it a little bit so it has a little bit more of a curve to it. And then the next one. There's no right or wrong answers to this project. Uh, you're just shaping it to the shape that you'd like. I tend to go for a little bit flatter look. I think it looks a little nicer, but you could certainly curve it up a little bit more if you prefer that. Uh, do what you like. The nice thing is, as I said, is you can reshape it if you want to tweak it a little bit further. So there we go. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. I think it looks great and I'm ready to use it in my house. So that's how you do the shaping. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me and I hope you enjoy your twister tray.